Hi, my name is Justin Hall, and this week I went to the International Cannabis Business Conference at the Hyatt Regency Hotel in downtown San Francisco. It was a little bit strange being in a corporate hotel setting filled with weed enthusiasts. I made a point of introducing myself to as many people as possible. I was there because in 1994 I registered bud.com. I've used it for web projects and my personal email for 20 years. Now it seems like it might be time for bud.com to serve a higher purpose. So I went around the conference trying to find people who might have an idea of how bud.com could serve them. And I met all these folks who all had their own portfolio of domain names serving the cannabis industry. And I realized that what's holding the cannabis industry back is not access to domain names. I talked to all kinds of folks, but at the end of my first day at the conference, I wasn't sure that I'd networked enough. Someone walked by and mentioned, hey, I'm gonna go get high, do you wanna join me? Now, normally at conferences, I don't really like to get stoned because I'm trying to talk to strangers and it can be a little intense to try and hold my thoughts together and keep normal speech with people if I'm pretty stoned. Then I realized this is the Cannabis Business Conference. There's probably plenty of people getting high here. So I said, hell yeah, I wanna get high with you because getting high can be a social activity. So 10 minutes later, I find myself in a hotel room with like 15 activists and entrepreneurs who are all smoking hash and doing dabs. I did dabs for the first time, which is sort of taking concentrated marijuana and a whole lot of gear and basically like cannabis into your brain very quickly and very cleanly. Um, I thought, this is great. I'm smoking pot at the International Cannabis Business Conference. It sounds like the punchline to a joke. But then I started asking people about their lives at this party. And I met a guy who was a cancer survivor at the age of 25. And I met a young woman with Crohn's disease. And these are people who have to get up in the morning and smoke pot in order to just quell the pain that keeps them from wanting to leave the house in the morning. So this is real medicine. And the reason these people are activists is because they want to get access to the medicine they need to be happy and healthy. And the reason they're entrepreneurs is because they want to be able to scale out access to that medicine for people who need it. I'm a pleasure seeker and curious about the world and I'm blessed with a relatively healthy constitution. So I just want to see marijuana legal so people don't go to jail. At this conference, I learned it's not easy to make money in marijuana. You have to really like risk. It's possible that this is the most legal weed will ever be in the Western world. And some kid will eat a brownie laced with pot and like sacrifice himself on the altar of the school auditorium somewhere in the Midwest and the whole thing will be over. We're all getting old and there's gonna be more and more seniors over the next few decades. A significant percentage of those seniors are on antidepressants and antipsychotics and all kinds of pharmacological drugs to manage their mood. So we have to ask ourselves, as more and more of us get older and more and more of us wanna to continue to be happy, maybe pot would be better than Prozac. A number of people pointed to the vineyards of Napa and Sonoma counties in California as places where people travel from around the world to get tipsy together. Perhaps the same things might happen. If weed was to become legal, travelers would come from around the world to visit Humboldt and Mendocino counties in California to get stoned together. In Colorado, they've legalized weed, but if you travel to Colorado and buy weed at a weed store, you can't smoke it in the weed store. Then you go back to your hotel, you can't smoke it in your hotel. So you have to go into an alley to smoke pot in Colorado? That doesn't sound quite like legalization. 
It would be great if there were public places where people could get stoned together because then people who are new, who are trying to figure out how much they should take, could talk to some veteran who would help them understand how to gently go into that great light. That's the risk. These laws are being written even now. It's not entirely clear how the laws are gonna end up and who they're gonna favor. So for example, there's a group of business people in Ohio putting together a change to the Constitution that would allow legal marijuana in Ohio. Except that one version of their draft would mean that only these guys could produce wholesale pot. So maybe you get legalization, but you get an oligarchy of pot producers. I thought to myself, if that's what it takes to succeed in marijuana business, I'm not really that sharky to figure out how to lobby to get laws changed and write myself into them. So there are business opportunities for weed tourism and cannabis for seniors, but you have to figure out first whether the laws even allow you to build the business you want to build. And if those laws aren't what you need, then you got to rewrite the laws. And I've never been a part of an industry where first you have to change the laws before you want to do business. There were people at the conference who proclaimed that any law that legalizes weed should also legalize home growing. Free legal backyard marijuana. And I stick with that every time. We should all be allowed to grow this powerful plant if we want. But then somebody else got up to talk about regulation, how we don't want to have weed just starting to get legal and popular and accepted and have too many people get food poisoning from some edible that wasn't properly packaged. I thought about going around to tell people, I want Bud.com to usher in a new era of legal safe access to weed. But I realized all these people have been working their entire careers over decades to try and make that happen. And it would be a little naive for me to walk into my first marijuana event and suggest I'm going to change the world. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with Bud.com. I'm now harvesting the stack of business cards that I came up with there and trying to figure out how best I can serve this community. People like you support The Justin Hall Show on Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash justin.